Hi everyone, welcome back to Digital Dream Box. Hopefully everyone is doing great out there. Today we're going to model a spoon. Should be a fun one. Before we begin though, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps this channel out a lot um, and uh, it keeps you up to date with the latest content. Now let's jump right in. Okay, so let's model this spoon. Um, our target will be uh, an ArcViz style project. So we always start with a target in mind, right? Um, so there's a few ways to model a spoon. We could start with a sphere or a plane. I'm gonna do it with a cube though. So put a cube in the scene. Up on the shelf, just click on the cube. I'll, ex I'll try and explain everything at least once for you guys. Um, and that way everyone should be able to follow along. Uh, okay, so we have our cube, and the next thing I want to do is smooth it. We can smooth it through the modeling toolkit or under mesh, smooth. Um, and I like to use the marking menu, so I'm holding down shift, holding down the right mouse button, and I'm going to go to smooth. There we go. And then I want to go into face mode, so I'm holding down the right mouse button, selecting face. I'm going to select all these top faces and delete them. Okay, pressing Q on the keyboard. Um, going back into, actually I'm going to stay in face mode because I want to reverse these faces. So I'm selecting all the faces and we can reverse them by going up to mesh display and just choosing reverse. There you go. Just makes it a little bit easier to see. All right. Now I will go into uh, object selection. So you can do it from here or hold down the right mouse button and go to object. And what I want to do next is have a preview of it, what it looks like smooth, because we're going to use some sub-D modeling. So press 3 on the keyboard after you select it. Press 3 on the keyboard. And then um, you'll be in um, smooth preview mode. And then I want to scale this. So I'm pressing R. And I'm going to scale it till it's roughly the shape of the bowl of the spoon. So we're doing free modeling on this one. right? Um, okay. And then the next thing we want to do is um, shape it the way we want, right? Going to go into vertex mode. I'm going to bring in the top vertices of, of a bit for my spoon. And then I think that looks pretty good like that. I think it might be a bit deep. So I'm going to go back into object mode and just scale it down just a touch. There we go. Okay, so compress one on the keyboard. Next thing I want to do is extrude a handle back. So I'm going to grab these two edges. So edge selection is right here or Hold down the right mouse button, go to edge mode, pressing Q on the keyboard to select these. Um, you don't need to, but I like the um, selection arrow. Um, and then what I want to do is, instead of um, extruding through here, I'm going to press the W key, hold down the shift key, and then drag this arrow back. And that allows me to um, um, do a smart extrude. I'm going to press 3 on the keyboard, though, so I can preview it. And you can see that... It's a little bit wide. I want to narrow that. Um, but before I do that, I want to scale it um, straight. So I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard so you guys can see. Go into the Scale tool, pressing R, scaling that in. And then I'm going to scale it in this way as well. All right. Now I want to bring this back here. Um, I'm going to press the W key to move. And I'm going to preview it as well. So pressing 3. I'm just bringing that back. I don't want to bring it back too far. You have to be careful because sometimes you think you uh, or giving yourself enough space. But say I bring it to about here. If I press 1 again, you can see that I've crossed over that uh, um, end vertex, right? So now I just have to bring it back. So, All right, so now what I want to do next is extrude out the handle. Holding down Shift again, can extrude. And for now, I'm just going to keep moving this down to have roughly the length of the spoon. Looks pretty good for... Um, the spoon length, and then I'm just going to raise it as well. I want to bring it up a little bit. All right. And then you can see that it's starting to round out here. We don't have a supporting edge. Pressing 1 on the keyboard, I need an edge somewhere here somewhere here, to um, help hold that shape. I'm also going to turn off the grid for now and close the modeling toolkit. So, um, okay. So I want to grab my multi-cut tool. If, it, if you want to grab it from the shelf, it's up here. Or... If you hover over your object, hold down shift, hold down the right mouse button, 
and you'll be able to go into multi-cut if you're in object selection or one of the component modes. Yep. And I'm just going to put a cut somewhere here. I'm holding down control and I'm going to put a cut about roughly right here. Okay. I'm going to press three on the keyboard again to take a look at it. Looks pretty good. I want to bring in the, those vertexes a little bit, vertices, I should say. So I'm going to press Q, go into vertex mode, grabbing these, just going to scale them in a little bit. Right, I think that looks pretty good. And then the next one thing I want to do is maybe raise these up a little bit. Um, I'm going to start actually with, actually I'll, I'll start with both of them. So I'm just going to bring it up because spoons generally have like, not all of them, but some of them have a little bit of curve going this way. So the one I'm using as a reference for my kitchen spoon does. I'm going to bring that up and then I'm going to bring this one up a little bit. And that looks pretty good right there, maybe a little bit more. Okay, pressing one on the keyboard again to take a look. That's what it looks like right now. What I think it could use is um, another edge loop in here. So I'm going to go into the multi-cut tool again, put another one here and press the three in the keyboard. And that allows that to round out a little more. Okay. Okay, the next thing I, um, we need to decide is, um, first I'm gonna press one, is if we want to extrude it now and then smooth it, or smooth it, then extrude it. Either can work. In my case, I think I want to give it a smooth and then I'll extrude it. So um, I'm going to go into object mode, select our spoon, and we can get to smooth from here if you like. Um, I'm going to use the marking menu, so holding down shift, holding down the right mouse button, and I'm going to give it a smooth. And that adds a bunch of, bunch of subdivisions for us. We can bring it up another one if we want. Let's take a look. Right, so we're paying attention to the silhouette and we're paying attention to also, um, or at least keeping in mind the viewing distance of our spoon. What's the closest we'll get to it and how much we need to sell that realism depending on the type of game that we're creating it for. In our case, it's more of an arc viz or maybe an exploration type of game. So we want a good amount of realism um, ArcViz projects often are VR these days, and people might be getting pretty close to these objects. So that's something we should keep in mind as well. Um, for now, I'll keep it at one subdivision level, and I'm going to extrude this. So I'm going to go into object mode again. Going up here, selecting our spoon, and I'm going to extrude it. So extrude buttons up here, or the marking menu, holding down the shift key, holding down the right mouse button, and then we can extrude it right here. And now I just want to give it some thickness. So, gonna give it a bit more thickness, something about here. Could work. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'm gonna press, um, going back into object mode, and it looks pretty good. Um, the topology is um, okay, right? We can fix it a little bit later. However, um, it's still looking a little bit um, Ge geometric geometrical what's the word i'm looking for very angular at these um round places where it should be round so uh, i'm gonna press three on the keyboard just to give it another preview i think that will look a lot better for us so what i'll do is before i smooth it again right add subdivisions i want to add a holding edge along the edge of the spoon so i'm going to go into the multi-cut tool and i'm going to middle mouse click right here so that it adds adds an edge right there, and that'll help it from rounding out too much. And that's a more of a preference thing. Some spoons are quite round, some spoons are a little more edgy there. And then now I wanna smooth it again. So um, we can click this button or hold down shift, hold down the right mouse button. And actually before I smooth it again, what I'm going to need to do is also um, add a holding edge right here. So I think we can do that now. Right. Um, let's grab the multi-cut. I'm just going to put a cut right there. That'll keep that from collapsing. Because without it, I'm just going to remove that edge. If I press 3 in the keyboard, you can see that how that collapses. Right. So let's just put that back. And that keeps that um, from rounding out too much. Okay. Now let's grab our spoon. And um, we're going to smooth it. Right. Perform a smooth. 
And um, I'll just click this button for now. There you go. And I think that looks pretty good for me. That is probably the minimum topology I want. Um, we can always make a level of detail system. If ever there's a lot of spoons and we don't need all that geometry, but right now at this distance, I think it looks pretty good. Um, there's something we can fix though. Okay, so first, um, let's give our spoon a material and inspect it. So one of the things is when you're making objects where you have curved surfaces, you always want to check that kind of like um, that shading, right? And we can do that by adding a blend material. I'm going to select the spoon, hold down the right mouse button, and go to add new material, and I can give it a blend. Right. Here are um, under the attribute editor. Um, if you ever don't need the, this history, which I don't really need anymore, I can go to object mode. I can delete the history and I can get to my material faster. It's just a faster way to get there. Or we can open up the hypershade or scroll down those inputs. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to reduce the color for a bit, for a sec. And then I'm going to play with the eccentricity and the specular roll off. I'm looking at the shade of all, trying to make that a little bit um, shinier. I think that is okay for now. Now let's take a look. So the handle area looks great. The spoon looks great from there. And from our viewing distance around here, it'll look pretty fine as well. Um, and then um, for something like this, if it's for cinematic, right, you can see that up close, you might have some um, little bit of shading issue right here. So if you're getting this close to the spoon, I would give it like, I'm going to hit three to preview, but I would give like one more, right? And then it looks um, a lot rounder. Okay, I'm going to press one on the keyboard again. And then the next thing I want to do is um, I actually want, I added that holding edge, which allowed me to um, um, keep that from rounding too much. And then what I want to do now is fix some of this topology. First thing I want to do with my spoon is remove this um, exterior edge here. Actually, no, I'll leave that there. Let me see. That looks fine. Okay, so um, what we have on our spoon is um, a lot of geometry running down the length of the, the handle. And we don't really need all those. They're not really contributing too much. They're not assisting us, assisting us in the shading. And um, what we can do is retopologize this. Um, and if you look at the spoon, you have um, three edges on this side, three on this side, one middle edge. And when you're, whenever you have three edges um, going down, you can um, convert it into one. So what we can do is create a three to one connection. So let me show you what that looks like on a plane. Here's our plane. And what I'm going to do is press T on the keyboard to bring up the tool window for the plane. Reduce the subdivision width. And I'm going to reduce this to about three. Um, this way I have like um, three edges running down. Okay. So right now I have these three edges and we can redirect them so that they, they flow into one edge. So I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to grab my multi-cut tool. Going to take this edge. And so let me first show you what it um, Actually, no, I'll, I'll just do it. So the, this one's going to run down here, and then it's going to run in here. And the other side's going to be the same. So that's running to there now. That's running the, to there now. And then what we can do, I'm going to go into edge mode, is now we can delete these edges. So I'm holding down control and pressing delete to make sure I delete those vertexes as well, vertices. Um, so now we have quads all around, along the top, quads here, here, here. And here we have a couple triangles, but if we delete this edge, we now have a quad here as well. And to better illustrate that, I'm just going to move this vertex just a little bit this way. And now you can see. So on our spoon, Right, I'm just going to turn on wireframe unshaded. And um, just going to bring up that color again, just so it's a little bit easier to see for you guys. Okay, so here's our spoon. And now we can do the same on this side and this side. So let me show you what that looks like. First, um, let's turn off wireframe unshaded to uh, inspect the shading, right? So right now, this is kind of what it looks like which looks fine, right? Um, and then we can see and compare. What we do, can do also is just duplicate this real fast. And then we'll work on this one, and then we'll compare after. Okay. 
And what I'm going to do is my X symmetry is running horizontally this way. I'm going to turn on object symmetry and this will make it a bit faster. Now I'm going to go into my multi-cut tool and I'm going to provide some cuts here. So I can probably do it right maybe here or even right here. So topology still looks pretty even up here. So maybe I'll start it right here. I'm going to add my cuts in here. Just going to cut up to there. And then I want to do the same to the other side. So there we go. Cut into here and then I'm going to cut up to here. And then what I want to do is go into edge selection, double click on this edge and then double click on this one. I'm holding down shift and double clicking so I grab all those. Make sure I grabbed it on the other side as well. I'm going to hold down control and delete. And now I've deleted those edges. And then what I want to do next is also maybe delete these ones and delete these ones. So I have quads. It won't affect it too much if you have triangles, I don't think in this case, but um, I think we don't really need those. Then in here, I'll grab those ver vertices and then I'm pressing the W key to go into the move tool and I'm going to just slide them up a little bit. So to slide them up, hold down control and shift and just drag this arrow up a little bit. All right. And on the other side, I'll do the same thing. Grab this one, holding down control and shift and slide. There we go. All right. So now we've um, redirected those. They're flowing into there and we've reduced the geometry, right? So we have um, for this one, it has 1640 triangles. This one has 1888. And let's inspect the, um, compare the difference, turning off wireframe unshaded and Let's just bring this a little closer, right? And let's take a look at the two of them. And you can see that it's pretty close. You don't really notice much difference at all. And we saved ourselves um, a lot of geometry. Um, so next thing I want to do is just double check. I'm going to clone this one again. So I'm just um, holding down shift. Just dupl It's a fast duplication. Just dragging that. Or you can press control D to duplicate. And what I want to do now is um, redirect these ones as well. So we have another 3 one possibility connection. Grabbing the multi-cut. First I need to select the object. Grab a multi-cut and then I'm going to cut to here. And then cut to here. And the next thing I want to do is um, just double click these edges really holding down control and sh uh, delete and then we'll delete that um this this edge as well these edges I should say and then there we go we have another quad we'll just give this um quad a little bit of space holding down control and shift just to slide that up along the, the edge there and then same thing with this one. And again, um, we have our blim material already. Let's inspect it. So this one has 1888 um, for triangles. This one has 1640. And this one has 1552 and um, they all look roughly the same. So here to here and then to here. This one has lost a bit actually of um, this kind of highlight here. But in the case of um, this spoon, I actually prefer it to tell you the truth. I think it looks um, better, but that's just um, a personal preference. And so um, we've managed to reduce the geometry of this spoon. Um, and the topology, um, um, reduce the topology and it looks pretty good. Yeah. So I think that is um, good for the spoon. Another thing we could have done, again, I mentioned, I think I, think I mentioned, is uh, create an LOD, right? Um, but in this case, I think this is fine. Right. I'm just gonna close this up. And then just don't forget to save. So file, um, increment and save. There you go. All right, so that concludes the modeling portion of our spoon. 
In the next part, we will UV unwrap it. Stay tuned for that. Um, see you guys in the next video.